Bethel. My name is Ann Nelson. I've been a member at Bethel for 31 years and I've been employed at Bethel as the office admin since 1999. And I'm so blessed to be a part of Bethel's staff. Today I'd like to talk about cleanliness. When I was in grade two, my mom got a job cleaning our three-room country schoolhouse. I thought that was pretty cool because I was her assistant. That is, it was cool until winter came and we also had to shovel the snow and shovel coal for the furnace and carry ashes out of the furnace up 25 stairs to the ash heap out the back door. It also lost some of its appeal when we had to give up two weeks of summer vacation and clean the school. We carried desks outside and scrubbed them and washed windows, scrubbed floors, waxed floors, put all the desks back in place, and had the place looking like new for the first day of school. I continued to help her with the cleaning process for 12 years until I went away to university. Then I still helped to scrub and wax floors on Christmas vacation. I said I never wanted to do cleaning again. Then I joined the U.S. Air Force. In the military, it's a given. You clean. And if you have spare time, you clean again. And if you still have time, polish the buttons on your uniform, polish your shoes, clean your workspace. In other words, clean. I was so excited when I got the chance to marry the love of my life, Russ Nelson. He was a confirmed bachelor, but gave it up for our mutual love. However, he had been living alone in a parsonage for three years before I came along and cleaning had never been his strong point. He was tidy, but not necessarily really clean. So upon moving into the parsonage after our wedding, the first thing I had to do was, you got it, clean. Fast forward a few years to our move to Canada. We found a house that was amazingly clean and snatched it up, but we soon found that there was hidden dirt, and so once again, I cleaned. And the next house we had was worse, the folks who lived there had let their dog do its business inside in the crawl space and didn't clean it up. That was a nasty cleaning job. Good thing I'd had so much experience in cleaning. When I worked at Concordia's library, one of my tasks on the evening shift was, yep, cleaning. Shelves in the stacks. Seemed like I was never going to get away from cleaning. When I was called active duty during Desert Storm, I had to help with the cleanliness of the labor and delivery unit where I was assigned. We scrubbed those delivery rooms to perfection. When I started working at Bethel, I was in the office by myself and started to tidy things up. I gathered up all the coffee mugs, plates, and coffee pots that were scattered around the offices. For the first time in my life, I got in trouble for cleaning too much. I bleached Pastor Marv's coffee mug. I didn't know that it was ripe and just so and should not be washed out, only rinsed. I learned quickly. Then we moved the offices to the new building and cleaned some more. On Sunday mornings, when church was still happening, it wasn't unusual to get a summons to clean a washroom or unplug a toilet or clean up a mess somewhere. Always clean, clean, clean. Then COVID-19 struck. Now we're told to wash our hands more use hand sanitizer, disinfect touch surfaces, don't breathe on anyone, clean. Now our daily routine is to unlock the doors and clean, wipe down desks, keyboards, door handles, doors, copier, kitchen, coffee station, washroom, and any touchable areas. What is all this fixation with cleanliness? David writes in Psalm 24, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false God. And in Psalm 51, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, 
You only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. When I ponder my life and the wrong things I've done and how I've hurt others, I consider how much cleaning God has had to do in me. I whine and complain. I do things that hurt others either by my actions or words, and I may not even be aware of it. I fail to listen to God's guidance through the Holy Spirit and blithely go on my way thinking that I know it all or I know what's best for me. But God sent his only son Jesus to do the cleanup of me. And he does it lovingly, not just for me, but for every single person who calls on his name. What an amazing God we worship and serve. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your goodness and mercy and for your cleansing me from the sin that would keep me from you. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to do the cleanup that we cannot do on our own. I pray that you would continue to cleanse me daily and keep me strong in faith to you all the days of my life. Amen. Thank you.